Hi, my name is Anne Markey, and before we get started, I want you to take a pen and paper and I want you to write down three unique things about you. And while you're doing it, I'll tell you three unique things about me. So I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and I'm an author. Now, you've been around the block for a while, so you know that those three things don't describe the complete picture of who I am. Those three things give you a very limited understanding maybe of some aspects of my life, but not all of them. There's so much more to me to that. So I'm 39 and I've been many things, a daughter, sister, server, deli worker, paper delivery person, missionary kid, elder's daughter, director's daughter, wife, teacher, mother, writer, speaker, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, while you were listening to that, maybe some of those words piqued your interest and you want to know more about that. And so if you do, let me know. Um, But we're not here for that. My point being is that we are a lot more than just the three things that we put down on pieces of paper. There are many different aspects of who we are. But even though I've had this amazing life and I have so much to be thankful for. When I think about myself, the first things that come to mind are actually usually negative. I think I'm fat. I think I'm ugly. I think nobody cares about me. I think people probably think that I'm done and have nothing interesting to say. I second guess everything I say, everything I write, everything I do. And those negative thoughts really never end. The devil's really good at just having me think about these things. But here's the kicker. Do you know what I learned only a few years ago? That most people don't even think about me, let alone think negative things about me, that the only person really focusing on all those negative things about myself is me. And it's actually really easy to look at my life and to say, what does it all add up to? What have I done? Is it really all that meaningful? Because the truth is that even though you may not think negatively of me, I think negatively about myself and the way I think about myself affects the way I act. And so I'll give you an example. When I was in elementary school, I had a really hard time Spelling. I still have a hard time spelling, but it was a huge challenge for me. At the time, the teachers I was surrounded by treated me like I was stupid. Like because I couldn't spell, they just assumed that I didn't know anything, that I wasn't good at geography, history, or anything else because of my inability to spell well. And that negative view of me really started to rub off until I actually started feeling stupid. And so I started to believe, well, if I can't spell, then I'm never going to be able to go to university. I'm never going to be able to do the things I love that obviously I'm going to have this really limited life that I'm going to be some seamstress in some factory because that's the only thing I'm good for. And so I let these negative beliefs of myself guide the way I was thinking about myself and guided my thoughts about even my future. But there's good news. Fast forward a few years. I'm in a different school system. I still can't spell, but instead of treating me like I was dumb, my teachers saw it as it was just a limitation And even though I would get grades off things for not spelling properly, I would still did a lot better in school because they could see beyond those mistakes and see that just because I couldn't spell didn't actually mean I was stupid. Um, And there's just a lot more freedom to thrive and learn in that environment. And instead of making me feel like I was dumb and I couldn't do anything, they helped me focus in the areas that I actually thrived in. And so I learned that I was capable of certain things. Maybe it wasn't spelling, but there were other areas that were of interest. And so because of that attitude towards me, suddenly I looked at my future and it seemed a bit brighter. I knew that there would probably be barriers that I had to overcome, 
But I suddenly realized that I could be more than a seamstress. I could be more and overcome my spelling mistakes. And I don't know whether it was my onset or my outlook on life. It was probably more the Lord. But after all that and the struggles I had in school, I went on to get two university degrees. Something I never imagined could actually happen. And what's actually ironic is my focus was in English. So I'm still not the great speller, but I write all the time. I speak all the time. I teach people how to read. I teach people how to write. Um, and I've just learned how to work around my inability to remember how certain words are spelled. But had I stayed in that first school system and had I continued to believe what I thought about myself, which was I, that I was stupid and I couldn't actually do anything important with my life, I'm not really sure what would have happened. Um, but I for sure see that the Lord interceded and brought me to a place where I could thrive and I could learn and I could grow. And so I'm really thankful. And I share this story with you just to tell you that the way you look at yourself, the way you think about yourself influences the decisions you make, the paths that you go down, and just a lot of areas of your life. So it's really important to know who we are, where we come from, and the value that we have. By the end of this Bible study, over the next couple of sessions, I want you to be able to look at yourself and see yourself the way that the Lord sees you. Now, when I was giving you my list, my three thing list and then my longer list, I left out one critical piece. And the thing that most identifies me is I'm a Christian. Now, that just means that I belong to Christ. And as a Christian, who I am, what I am, is defined by Christ and nothing else. My true value comes from who I am in Christ, not what I think about myself or even what other people think about me. Now, as I said, over the next couple of sessions, we're going to discuss who we are in Christ. When we believe what God says about us, we can have freedom over what other people think about us. Because now we have the confidence in who we are and who we belong to. So today, I want us to focus on this, that in Christ, we are a new creation. When we become Christians, we become something completely new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says this, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new person. The old is gone and the new is come. So when we become Christians, we get an entire new identity. Ephesians 2, 1 says this, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses in sin. So the Bible tells us that before we were saved, we were dead. Now, because we're human beings and we're breathing, it's easy to think, well, how can we be dead and yet living? And being, when we're not saved, we are dead in Christ, meaning that we're not following God, we're following the Lord, that we're disobedient to the word of God, and that we're actually objects of wrath. So it means that even though we may be physically alive, our spirit within us is dead. And then when our body dies, we will be separated from God forever. But when we believe in Jesus, God turns our dead bodies into new and living bodies. So to try and explain this better, I want us to think about a caterpillar. So I have a picture on the screen and I want you to try and describe it. Now, I know I can't hear you, um, so I'll give you some few words that I would maybe use to describe this caterpillar. Um, and so maybe I would say it's kind of slow, a little bit ugly, kind of creepy. Before we know Jesus, we're kind of like this caterpillar. We're not that pretty. We have some spots of sin on us. 
and it, all those spots are all over our bodies and we don't really do much. But a caterpillar doesn't stay a caterpillar. We know that a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, a beautiful creature that looks completely different than its old self. I'm going to continue reading in Ephesians chapter two, and I'm going to be re reading verses four to eight. And they say, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. When we become Christians, we too go through a sort of metamorphosis. We change from being dead to being alive. And this is what the Bible says about us before we knew Christ. We were enemies, dead, sinful, and separated from God. But when we believe in Jesus and we become Christians, we're loved, saved, alive in Jesus. But remember the caterpillar? God created the caterpillar with the ability for it to be, turn into a butterfly on its own. It was the way it was created. But for us, we can't make that change on our own. The only way that we can be saved and that we can change from dead to living is by the grace of God that has been given to us through our faith in Jesus Christ, who he is and what he did on the cross, his death for us. And it has absolutely nothing about what we can do. And it has absolutely everything to do with God and who he is and what he did for us. So the Bible actually has more to say about the change that happens to us. So now I would love for you to turn into your Bibles and go to Ezekiel chapter 36. And I'm going to read verses 25 to 27. And they say, I, so God, will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So these are only a few verses, but when you go through them carefully, you see that a Christian actually goes through quite a lot of change. So this is what happens. We move from being spiritually unclean to clean. We move from worshiping idols to worshiping God. We move from having a heart of stone that's unresponsive to God to having a heart of flesh that is sensitive and responsive to God. And then we move from having no power to follow God to having his spirit in us so that we can follow him. Before we know God, our lives are defined by what we believe in ourselves. but we're full of sin. But when we become Christians, all those things disappear. And what transforms us is so many of these wonderful things. So all the sin and ugliness of who we are disappears in Christ. And then we're like that beautiful butterfly in Christ Jesus, completely different because of who God is. So today I talked about how in Christ we're new creation and how the Lord changes us from being dead to alive and some of the other changes that we go through when we become saved. And that regardless of what other people say about us, that our value isn't in what other people say about us. It's not even in what we say in ourselves. It certainly has nothing to do with what we can do. But our value comes from God and who he is and who he says we are and what he has done. 
But you know what's the most amazing thing about Christianity? That that is just the tip of the iceberg. There are many more verses in the Bible that tells us exactly who we are in Christ. And that's what we're going to be learning in the next couple weeks. So there is so much more to explore and I can't wait to get into it because I love this topic. Because like I said, when you know who you are in Christ, you then have confidence to stand and to follow him. And it's a complete game changer. If you have any questions about anything I said, just make sure to drop a comment below. Please tag me so I can see it. Also, if you want to follow along or do your own study when it comes to being a new creation in Christ, you can go ahead and to download the workbook for this week. You can find it in the Christian Growth Hub dashboard. If you don't have access, you do need to upgrade to get the workbook and then lifetime access to these lessons that I'm streaming in this group. But I really encourage you to go through the workbooks and to do that study for yourself. So aside from that homework, I do want you to think about something as you walk away from this. I want to know what changes have you seen in yourself after you came to know the Lord? So we know what scripture says that we were old and become new. But now I want you to think about how you've changed and how that change relates to the relationship that you have with the Lord Jesus. So you can answer that question in the comments below, or I am going to make a separate post with that picture. I mean, with that question so that you can answer it. And I can't wait to see what you say, because I think each of us have our own story of how the Lord has transformed our lives. And I'd love for you to share that with us because I want this group to be encouraging to one another to say, oh, and the Lord helped me change in this way. And maybe that'll encourage somebody else. So please just take a minute and to think about what changes you've seen in yourself since you've become a Christian. I can't wait to continue in this sessions. So join me next time as we learn that in Christ, we are a masterpiece. So Thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to see what you have to say in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye.